Before we start, we will try to keep the presentations to eight to 10 minutes. I will gently remind you when it is going to be 10 minutes and discussions to three to five minutes. We'll try to keep the inter interruptions as minimal as possible during the presentations. Good morning, everyone. I'm presenting on behalf of Medicine 5 on the topic, the master stroke. So the uh, case goes like this. Presenting Mr. K, a 37-year-old farmer from Kadapa, who presented with complaints of right upper limb and left uh, lower limb weakness from 1st of April, which worsened on 30th of April, with sudden onset of inability to speak on 30th of April at 4.30 a.m. So he was apparently well until the end of March when he had a mild slurring of speech. Four days later, he developed a weakness. He was not able to wake up from the bed at around 4 p.m. And uh, he was not able to move his right lower limb, followed by upper limb, and was admitted in a nearby hospital. He was able to feel pain touch on that side of the body at that point of time. So during the admission, he was, his sugars were found to be high and incidentally detected to be uh, positive for hepatitis B. And MRI brain showed a, a diffusion restriction in the left basal ganglia, coronary areata, frontal parietal cortex, subcortical regions, and right parietal cortical subcortical areas. Echo was normal and he was started on clopidogrel, atorvastatin, rivaroxaban, veldagloprin, and met metformin. So following that, uh, he regained his power and he was doing his uh, daily activities. On 30th of April, 4.30 a.m., he was noted to have weakness on the right side of the body with inability to turn in the bed and was unable to speak. No history of loss of consciousness, seizures, a history of trauma or bowel or bladder dysfunction. No history suggestive of cranial nerve involvement. No history of rash, photosensitivity, joint pain or Raynaud's. So past history wise, uh, for the past one year, he was having a holocranial headache, which was dull aching type intermittent with no photo or phonophobia, double vision or no history of visual disturbances. And no prior known comorbidities like uh, uh, tuberculosis, no history of surgeries, no history of blood transfusions. Family history wise, um, father is a known hypertensive, uh, but no history of sudden cardiac death, uh, CVAs or diabetes in the family. Personal history wise, he was a regular smoker, smoking up, up to 12 BDs per day for the past 10 years, not an alcohol consumer with no history of allergies. So going to examination, general examination, vitals, he was a uh, respiratory rate was 22 with a saturation of 98% in room air. He was afebrile. Blood pressure was 100 by 70 in bilateral upper limbs and systolic blood pressure in the lower limbs were 104 millimeters of mercury and pulse rate 60 per minute regular, no radio radial or radio femoral delay. All peripheral pulses were felt equally. And uh, GCS wise, he was uh, uh, E4, um, 10 aphasic. Uh, he was not able to verbalize. And GRBS was 98. No palarectal sinusis clubbing or lymphadenopathy or pedal edema. A tattoo was noted over the right forearm. And there was no acanthosis, no carotid brewery. Uh, so going to a central nervous system examination. Higher functions, he was conscious, uh, motor aphasic, and he was a right-handed person. Cranial nerve examination, uh, first cranial nerve we could not examine. Second one, there was pupillary reflex were uh, present bilaterally, no RAPD. Fundus, he was not cooperative. Uh, third, fourth, uh, sixth cranial nerves were normal. Uh, fifth, uh, fifth trigeminal nerve, corneal reflex was present. There was deviation of angle of mouth to the left side, but uh, forehead wrinkling was present. And eighth nerve was intact. Uh, vivula was central and uh, gag was present. Neck movements were normal with normal tongue power, no fasciculations. Sensory system was also intact. Motor system wise, did not have any fasciculations or tremors. Bulk was normal. Tone wise, uh, it was increased on the right side, upper limb and lower limb. Power wise in the upper limb it was 3 by 5 and lower limb it was 1 by 5 on the right side. Left side power was 5 by 5 in both upper limb and lower limb. Deep dependent reflexes were uh, increased on the right side uh, and plantars were mute on the right side and uh, in the left side it was flexor. Sen uh, cerebellar signs were absent. Meningeal signs were also absent. Spine was normal. Other system examination was normal. So uh, history wise in summarizing he is a young 37 year old uh, a uh, farmer with uh, no known prior comorbidities, but he was recently diagnosed with hepatitis B and diabetes. And with past history of <coughs> stroke just one month back, he presented again with a recurrent stroke. So it's a recurrent stroke syndrome with right hemiparesis, uh, lower limb more than left uh, upper limb with motor aphasia and right human facial palsy. So anatomical localization was to the left ACA and MCA territory, probable embolic stroke since it's a recurrent. So uh, what are the causes we considered for the recurrent stroke in young was 
First is embolic infarct, either artery to artery or a cardio embolism. And hypercoagulable disorders, vasculitis, uh, which can be systemic or primary or meningitis. And uh, vasculopathy and drugs like cocaine or amph amphetamine. In our uh, patient, there was no history of drug abuse. So investigation-wise, baseline investigations were within normal limits. Creat was normal, urine routine was normal. And imaging MRI brain showed acute infarcts in the ACA territories bilaterally left more than right and left internal watershed and left high anterior watershed regions. Subacute infarcts in the left temporal region and chronic infarcts in the right high parietal region and the left uh, medial lentiform and adjacent genome of internal capsule. And MRI showed these findings, luminal atten attenuation and multiple uh, intracranial vessels, uh, luminal atten attenuation of left distal ICA with absent flow in the terminal most segment of the left ICA, multifocal luminal attenuation of M1 segment of left MCA, along with marked attenuation of inferior division, and uh, luminal attenuation of A1 segment of left ACA, right A1 segment was completely absent, luminal attenuation of A2 and A3 segments of both ACAs, left more than right. So it indicates a multi-infarct state. So throughout embolism, uh, ECG was showing a normal sinus rhythm and uh, echo was normal, ejection fraction was 60%. Keratodoppler showed only low uh, velocity in the left ICA and probably due to the distal narrow, narrowing. And three-day holter was also showing sinus rhythm. So embolism was ruled out. Young stroke woke up. So we did the B12 folate homocysteines, which were all normal. And the coagulation parameters were normal. Thrombotic workup was sent, which was also negative. And uh, for the inflammatory markers, CRP, ESR were within normal limits. ANA was negative, anticardiolipin was 2. Anti PR3, anti MPO was, were also within normal limits. Triaglobin was not detected. Uh, blood borne virus screen, HBS AG alone was positive with a HBV PCR of 274. Alpha fetal protein was 1.8. Ultrasound abdomen showed a gray to fatty liver, and RP was within normal limits. And uh, metabolic workup, uh, he was uh, already a diabetic, 8.8%. And since he is a young patient, uh, we did see peptide and antigen, which was also normal. And uh, lipid profile was normal. So we went ahead and did an MR vessel wall imaging, which showed circumferential wall thickening of left terminal ICA beyond the cavernous segment involving the cleano clinoid, ophthalmic, and communicating segments. And uh, the radiologist suggested a vasculitis. And we went ahead and did a CSF analysis. It showed uh, normal glucose levels, but the protein was mildly elevated. Count showed mild elevation. WBC was 8, with a differential count of uh, lymphocyte 16 and uh, mono macrophages were 4. So this patient was a young patient who had a recurrent stroke. Uh, since initially, we considered an embolic etiology, and, but then uh, that was ruled out. Young stroke up, workup also uh, was, did not uh, yield much. So what could be the possibility of uh, a young patient getting a stroke? In the differentials, I mentioned a primary CNS vasculitis. So uh, what is primary angiitis of the CNS? It is an uncommon disorder of unknown cause that is restricted to the brain and the spinal cord with median age of diagnosis being 50 years. The criteria for the diagnosis is given by Calbrus and Malik. Uh, it consists of three, uh, uh, three criteria, presence of an acquired, otherwise unexplained neurological or psychiatric deficit, presence of either angiographic or histopathologic features of angiitis within the CNS, and no evidence of systemic vasculitis or any other disorder that could mimic the angiographic or pathologic features of the disease. So in our patient, there was a neurologic, neurologic deficit, uh, which we could not uh, otherwise explain. And we had a angio classic angiographic uh, finding, MR uh, vessel angiography was showing a circumferential thickening suggestive of a vasculitis. And we could not find any other uh, evidence of systemic vasculitis or any other disorders. So he was fitting into the criteria of primary angiitis of CNS. So clinical manifestations wise, in primary angiitis of CNS, the, the studies showed that headache was the predominant uh, symptom, followed by altered cognition, hemiparesis, uh, other focal neurological deficits, aphasia, transient ischemic attacks, and uh, uh, blurring of vision, visual field effects. So evaluation wise, uh, in primary angiitis of CNS, acute phase reactants, antinuclear antibodies, ANCAs, and uh, antiphospholipids will be normal. And CSF analysis, most common finding is mildly increased leukocyte count with mild elevation of CSF protein. 
and gold standard for diagnosis is cerebral and meningeal biopsy and the angiographic findings will uh, uh, will be alternating segments of stenosis with normal or dilated uh, uh, intervening segments so mri findings wise there will be most common is infarction multiple infarcts is the most common mri brain finding along with that leptomeningeal enhancement they can also co cause hemorrhagic stroke and tumor like mass lesions management wise there so far there is no randomized clinical trials for the management of uh, primary cns vasculitis only in a cohort study showed that glucocorticoids alone or in combination with cyclophosphamide gave a favorable response so uh, other than that in the maintenance we can give azathioprine methotrexate and mmf so total treatment course was 12 to 18 months but uh, in real uh, real time cases have shown uh, was requiring more uh, more than 18 months so in our patient we gave a uh, pulse uh, pulse with methylprednisolone and one uh, one dose of cyclophosphamide and was planned for a steroid tapering dose and cyclophos once a month for 3 months is yet to come for follow up so our young final diagnosis was recurrent young stroke suspected primary cns vasculitis and uh, right hemiplegia lower limb more than upper limb with motor aphasia and uh, right human facial palsy left icia disease and with nhs score of 10 and modified ranking scale of 3 with the other risk factors being smoking and diabetes and chronic hepatitis b virus infection so learning points when should we suspect a primary cns vasculitis in a patient with uh, recurrent uh, stroke young patients and whose uh, other uh, metabolic vasculitic work up are all negative and the clinical presentation of cns vasculitis and how to diagnose a primary cns vasculitis thank you thank you raswana uh, any questions or comments from the audience in your literature review did you find any association of primary cns vasculitis with hepatitis b no sir because uh, vasculitis otherwise can be an extra hepatic manifestation of chronic hep b infection no reports no reports i have a problem with terming somebody recurrent young stroke is the stroke young when he comes or the uh, patient young so i better term might be stroke in the young opinion if there are no further